so it's mm -hmm. with a, yeah, so with a, a lot of care and awareness. So that's for sure we'll be studying that, and also just the diagrams of a, a mouth, you know, how you see the, the tongue who goes up mm -hmm. and down there, the whole manuals for for um, Russian actors that show exactly the position of the tongue and, and um, all other parts of the mouth, how they should move and, and produce specific sounds. So that's, that will be absolutely part of the course. Um, with uh, In terms of incorporation of grammar and other aspects, I'm still trying to design that because of course you can incorporate a textbook, but I'm not sure that we'll have enough time to actually work on a specific exercise, so we'll have to deal with grammar as we go and uh, just carry out shorter exercises, more of a communicative nature than um, grammar drills that we usually do in, in first, second, third year when you just have to write down a lot of educations and, and um, quite a bit of uh, repetitive work. So. And what you're thinking at this point about, I was intrigued by the translation part of it, mm -hmm. because I think that is a very potentially very useful part in exercise with kind of going to this Duridian question again. Yeah. What what's what is it what are you trying to do for or what do you think you're going to do uh -huh. for the students? Is it about an accurate translation or is it really about understanding the language, understanding the meaning behind the language? What's what's your goal for that? I think that I want them to get very intimate with the play and, and to the point of uh, knowing and feeling and, and exploring each and, and every word that's um, that's used by Mayakovsky, so that we can actually explore his innovation in language and uh, to make sure that they really understand what he's trying to do, what each um, word is trying to do in that language. So, Because also we have so many different registers of speech, I want them to convey um, how they are, act, uh, how Mayakovsky reflects different speakers' uh, abilities uh, and their mistakes, actually in their utterances, so we'll be focusing on that when we translate. And then also translation will help us to eliminate some of the parts that will be uh, not relevant for our production because we're also constrained by time, and so we cannot afford a two hour uh, play, <coughs> getting closer to a one hour length probably, so just some of the elements would have to go, and once they translate it and know it really intimately, then they will be more able to make um, informed decisions about what to let go. Want to retain. And those translations will be the basis for the mm -hmm. super titles? Oh, super titles, okay. absolutely, yes. And then they will go to super titles. And I will have to have two or three students working at the super title crew um, to make sure everything is uh, correct. Um, I will not have a TA or any assistant for this, this, <laughs> this, this course, so it feels like somebody uh, um, needs to be there for assistance purposes. But since I also would have just 15 students, I think it's probably doable without. And it usually, well, actually, I was a TA for that course. So <laughs> back in the day, we didn't have a TA for it, but a TA. yeah, we didn't have a TA for it. I ended up doing most of the work anyway. So because <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm a control freak, I don't know how to right. delegate responsibilities. So it's like, yes. yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, yes. it's good. I know what I'll do. I do. So, uh -huh. yeah, it, it didn't matter. But it's a great idea to, to appoint somebody with a theater experience um, as a stage manager. Yeah. And that's something yeah. that needs to be done for sure. Because, uh, and also, they can help you with the pronunciation. When exactly. you're acting, put us yeah. on the stage, you can divide the groups mm -hmm. and have you listen to one group and the TA. We in Italian, we don't have it either, but right. you know, I think <laughs> it would be lovely mm -hmm. to have one to do that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. hopefully, you get maybe a former student or somebody. That's right. what I do on a volunteer basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we use the graduate students. I would enlist them for pronunciation help outside yeah. of class. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. yes. Again, I should have made it obligatory for some of the students. I right. just said, hey, if you want help, go. And this is the sign-up list for, for those. Yes. And so very few of them did. But I mean, that was a good resource to tap into, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. It's always something that you can put when you write a letter of recommendation exactly. for them. You know? That's so it. it always yeah. looks good. Yeah. They know this. <laughs> And I love the super title idea. I wanted to do that um, to show you how little control I had over this. They told me no, they didn't want to do it, so we didn't end up doing it. But I thought it was, it was going to be a, a fantastic idea, just precisely for that, right? Working with right. translation, um, you know, what do you want to have? Do you want every single word right. up there? Do you just want to? Absolutely not. No. Exactly. Yeah, it's so the gist of it, uh -huh. like a libretto, you know, yeah. and, so, and also print out uh, exactly. leaflets yeah. with, with yeah. uh, loops. Yeah, but those types of decision, you know, what do you want to have on the super titles, what do you not want to working mm -hmm. together to translate them and do all that kind of stuff, I thought would be fantastic. And mm -hmm. 
we did a little bit of it in class, and I said, well, is that something we want to do in the play? And they said, no. So mm -hmm. the only difficulty with the, with the super titles is, is when you're the one who's controlling the super titles, and maybe a, something gets skipped, somebody's line gets skipped, and you have like a, an entire audience behind you. You're like, yeah, you know, trying just, to like trying, trying to catch up and, and yeah, find the kind of you know. And it happens in every production. Exactly, yeah, and, and, and you're watching the production, and everything is fine, and the audience isn't lost at all. But they're like, what are these words? Like, what? Why is right. why is someone going like so quickly through the words? Well, mm. because we skipped four lines. Yeah. And, <laughs> so actually, I'm very old fashioned, and I know you know I, I attend all your French plays, yeah. which are fantastic, and Thanks. they really help me. You know, they really help me. However. I love theater so much that the idea that I have to exactly. go, you know, oh, right. even with the opera, yeah. you know, yeah. when you go to the opera, you end, yeah. and uh, I just decide, okay, that either I'm going to read the, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. opera title or I'm going to enjoy the performance. Right. Right. So usually it doesn't matter of the language. Exactly. In fact, one time I assisted at one of the German play that was many years ago in the theater department, which was something very unusual. Yeah, the theater department will give you a room. They somebody who doesn't yeah. teach there. So I was really amazed, but I think it was some kind of big funding from a com I don't know. Sure. But anyway, I you know I don't speak German, but at a certain point I say, no, I'm just gonna get into the play. And I was able to follow up even without, you know, because they were so good, obviously. And the opera was the exact thing that I used once we decided we didn't want right. to do translations. I mean everybody that goes to the opera doesn't speak. Right. Italian, Italian. Italian. <laughs> right? Um, um, they just don't. But then you get into the improv and the, you know, the physical acting of it. So I mean, how can you? I mean, that was one of the things. How can we not translate this into a language that everybody speaks, but an even more universal one, namely just yeah. physicality, acting, right. yeah, right. physicality, right. facial expression, the magic of theater. Yeah, the magic yeah. of theater. <laughs> yeah. But the magic of theater is so dependent on the response of your audience yes. that's also yes. I want the audience to give some feedback, that's why sure. I want them just to act out on stage and everything when they feel bad and, and uh, without this magic or so. so well, I, I, uh, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. talk about and I'll present. Mm -hmm. um, I like to do it through a website. Oh, okay. uh, and of course, you know, it's not mandatory, but if you're really interested and you see your son or daughter play, then I'm sure that your daughter and son will oblige you to go to the website and at least know what's going on, what is it, why are we doing it. So I'll talk later. Excellent. Yeah. It's an alternative. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to, to finish up, in terms of student production, I saw one example on YouTube. Actually, there are just three or four productions total available on YouTube. It's not a very popular play to to um, stage right now, so to produce right now, and because it's so complex, because it's so difficult, and there's so many um, possible uh, criticisms, but the one that was recorded was staged at the University of Nottingham, and so it was an interesting production, but they just, basically the, the wedding scene that is full of jokes, and getting up, and running around, and drinking vodka, and being rambunctious, they're just sitting down and just uttering their lines, so it's another approach, but yeah. it's, um, something that I don't want to do, but again, it's up to my <laughs> students what they want to do, so, um, and um, also to um, comment on what you said about uh, students being like blank slate in the many ways, so they don't know a lot of cultural references. This is also my fear, is that if I let them navigate that experience, it will be really flat and, and will not have the complexity or the depth that I could help them with, if, you know, if I, I'm more hands-on in terms of this is gonna be like this, and that's a decision. So lots of questions, lots of uh, um, yes, exciting um, new pro proposals in terms of this uh, course. So I'm looking forward to uh, hearing what you have to say in your comments. Questions, please comments. Yeah, questions. Yeah, comments, questions. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say striking the balance between what you want out of this and what they want out of it. I mean, it's always. You do control this, right. too. I mean, you right. steer this through working with the text and, I mean, mm -hmm. picking out the jokes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that's one of the cool parts about this. Um, and also the one that I did was getting the humor across to them, seeing that this, that these are funny things. Because that's the hardest thing to get in a different language or culture is getting the jokes. I mean, even yeah. between native speakers of a language, generationally, it's hard, mm -hmm. right? I mean, imagine crossing over. but. Um, you can steer that in certain ways, right, without knowing or without letting them know that you're steering them in a certain way. Right? That's the trick, right? right? Yeah. 
Sneak manipulation. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Also, you've got a great, with this production, the 2000 production you showed us a little mm -hmm. bit of was so uh, obviously a product as you, I, I, was, I did not see this by the 2000s, mm -hmm. but uh, it was such a shtick in 2000 that every play, even Chekhov, even the, the really plays about nothing right. of Chekhov, were filled with music and dance because mm -hmm. musical theater had just come finally to New Russia. Mm -hmm. And so everything, they would take a tiny bit of music and turn it into, like you mm -hmm. said, 20 right. or 30 right. minutes right. of the play. Mm -hmm. You do have, because the play does inherently have dance and it does mm -hmm. have music in it, a lot of chance to use this kind of, kind of total physical response right. with them of really mm -hmm. using teaching dance and teaching music as part of developing their language skill, mm -hmm. right? Of lots and lots of instruction in Russian about mm -hmm. how to do this, mm -hmm. right? How to do this. Right. I think it's a terrific right. yeah. uh, possibility for this mm -hmm. production. Mm -hmm. yeah, even in a short, hour-long production, you can do that. Yeah, it's really cool. Maybe an alternative to the translations uh -huh. would be to give something like this to the audience yeah, at the well, beginning. Yeah, yeah. They don't get that regardless all the way through. Right. The, 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 you have the main libretto. ideas and then with all the acting, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you'll come. Just like in the ballet, right? Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You brought the mm -hmm. opera, you first yeah. take a look. You read a little bit about it because otherwise you'll be it's very funny, and we've done the, the past that Marina was alluding to, uh, referring to, I should say, her being a TA, of course, we had a woman, who, an instructor who did this for years, and we polled our audiences who, who'd come to it. We'd done uh, basically just a program. They hated that. Mm -hmm. Then we did a libretto. We did s uh, super titles, and, and we polled the audiences what did they want, and it was very interesting. They, without question, wanted they said, we want the super title there, and if we don't like them, we ignore them. Right. At the point we don't need yeah, to look, we don't look. Kind of but they want, to, right. they want that crunch almost. Right. <laughs> that, that was very funny. I still remember when right. we, tro we didn't do them, right. the, and the audience actually got very, mm -hmm. what do you expect us to do? We don't speak Russian. What right. do you want us to do? Mm -hmm. Well, and in some <laughs> cultures, like I'm from Ecuador, yeah. and we, we, I grew up with that. Yeah. Every movie I saw, I had the, the titles so there, so right. just yeah. you yeah. just get used yeah. to combining those two things I, uh, without yeah. having to miss anything. I'm a bell. I don't, I don't, I don't, well, <laughs> yeah, I but I, I can see your no, point, I though. No, I, no, I can no, see no, your point. You know, the students we have now, they, they're very, they're really resistant even to, to subtitle film. Very, very yes. resistant to it. So and to text in general. <laughs> <laughs> emojis. I mean, we right. should do emojis. Super <laughs> emojis. <laughs> That's what we should do. So right? without dumbing it down, I really wanted to be uh, I'm you. I, 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 very yeah. bright and striking yeah. and full of motion and action. And I'm yet, you. of course, we're sneaking a, a very really interesting play about that by, by balance, very yeah. uh, commercial figures. So. Yeah. Other comments, because I thought there was another hand that I that I think I spoke over. There was to say. Yeah. It's a wonderful project. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, looking forward to uh, inspiration. Great nice project. Great. Yeah. So, with fourth year students, how much how much uh, this kind of echoing the question oh, yeah. I, I asked Alex as well. Um, because so much of what you have to do in that first period you showed us the the you know January through mid February. Mm -hmm. In getting, it's a 1928 play. Right. Uh, the Roaring Twenties in Russia, where right. the Soviet Union, right. so different right. in even whatever they think they know about mm -hmm. flappers and Great Gatsby and all that stuff right. is not what's happening in right. Russia. Right. How much of that information? Mm -hmm. What's coming? What's coming from yeah. you? And where where are they getting? Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely, work with visuals, and, yeah. and since sense, uh, Mayakovsky was so. A vi um, well, visual work was so important for him, and he designed a set of posters for the, the new regime to actually uh, talk about who is the bourgeois, who is the new enemy, who is the new good person. So we'll study those posters for sure for the visual inspiration. And Okna uh, Rosta, the windows of Rosta. And uh, um, we'll also look at the way that people were dressed through the photographs. So Mykowski himself, he is a closer associate. Uh, we will look at the Maripol's production pictures from the production, which um, are actually um, here. So, uh, so we see them uh, wearing those uh, overcoat type of things. So those are just street vendors, but they are absolutely flappers uh, at the wedding scene, at least. All the um, um, 
pearls that they're wearing and on those frilly dresses. So yes, yeah, so I was also choosing that play because of its uh, flapper appeal. And, yeah. and yeah, yeah, of course the great gets it, but everybody was so poor and, and, and starving, and so it's like great gasping in the gulag. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so something where it's yeah, very it's dark. Really <laughs> Uh -huh. it's a but, but also, Bukowski was making fun of all, all that love uh, for flapper aesthetic. <clears throat> That's why it's a, it's a harsh critique of that. So it has to be over the top as well. It's not it, just it, one feather. It's, it's, it's That's it. It struck me from, <laughs> right. from Alex's that when he did the comparison yeah, that of the stage great. that uh -huh. that our students, especially from the, from that from mm -hmm. this generation of students, mm -hmm. would immediately uh, I hope associate with Mad Men. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. like mid mid century yeah. modern, right? Mm -hmm. what, what what does that look like? That yeah. that feel. And is that really what we're going for mm -hmm. here? It's tougher because at best, at best, uh -huh. they might have great gas speed. At, right. best. at best, don't, look, don't count on that. But just very yeah. impoverished actual setting. So this yeah. is also how do we make it um, look authentic without it looking too uh, flabby? Yes, yeah. and too yeah. just. Uh, that, that it can't design. be too glam, but it can't to be too, to, to, yeah, to, can't um, be your side. That's, that's too a shabby. Mm -hmm. Shabby chic. Shabby chic. <laughs> yeah. Without the chic. chic. Uh -huh. um, I'm wondering about the translation that they're doing. Will they be translating it into 1920 type oh, English style, or should uh -huh. they do a Hamilton approach where they translate it into hip hop? Uh -huh. uh, maybe different ways of translating for different characters. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that that's a, that's an excellent idea. And, uh, and initially, I was thinking about just uh, making them um, do a, a working translation, so what we call podstrochnik in Russian, just a word by word, just to make sure that they understand all the words and, and the meaning, so just something very utilitarian and rudimentary. But now that you're saying um, that we should probably experiment with different registers in English and mm -hmm. see how they relate to that, that play, that could be a great idea, actually. because this. This uh, translation is not for, it, it will be the basis of super titles, but it's not for kind of public consumption. So it's only for us to make sure that we are understanding the play there. Well, especially if you brought up the notion that this is a heteroglossic play. It really has all these different registers. Right. Can they? Can they find appropriate registers in English mm -hmm. that match up to this new, right. the new the net plan, mm -hmm. the kind of new economic policy guy mm -hmm. who's using trying to use all this high flown new right. modern nineteen twenties Russian mm -hmm. as opposed to the traditional peasant mm -hmm. Russian that's mm -hmm. being used by the people by the workers right. in the background. Yeah, and and, and yeah. him initially as a, as somebody who was very uh, right. humble origins. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's a tougher thing. Yes, that's, it that's is tough. That's very tough. Yeah. <laughs> Tough, but, uh, but I think it will be exciting for our students at fourth uh, year level to actually tackle those tasks. I think they're well equipped for that. It's just uh, needs to be, maybe we'll, uh, uh, using Krashen's uh, kind of um, terminology, it will not be uh, plus one, it will be plus five or plus right. ten, <laughs> so depending yeah. on the student, but I, I think they, they are absolutely ready to be pushed in that direction and, and put what my guide is. Hopefully they will get there and then they will perform the play and, and they will get a lot of fun out of this experience. Any yeah, other parting shots, parting comment for you? Yeah, please. Yeah. So uh, I'm Katie Japanese here and I don't think we can do some like drama production or something like that. I and mean, if we don't have that kind of tradition, mm -hmm. students are not interested in. But most of my students they are into anime. Mm -hmm. so, then, so everything is about the anime, so I'm thinking maybe, you know, I can ask them to change anime to a live mm -hmm. action thing. Yeah. And yeah. they may be interested in doing it because idea. they are very interested in anime. Mm -hmm. We talk about it anime, right. anime. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they are into ja in yeah. Japanese class. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe I can uh, do some little projects, like making your favorite anime Movie, you know, to an anime, live action thing, so they can sure. yeah. yeah. so yeah. really Susan, Susan Napier was here? Long time. Yeah, she, she left already. Well, right. Yeah. But, yeah. So oh, she her, did, the, yeah, well, the class. Well, her work on anime, though, yeah. would mm -hmm. be a real, I, I think this is a great yeah. idea, by the way, <laughs> to, do, to do live action anime with, mm -hmm. with words. Because yeah. they are interested, they know all the anime movies available. Yeah. <laughs> Anything, which I have no idea, but... <laughs> But they are so interesting, they already know everything, so they may be right. more interested in learning more. 
I, just, I saw a production not too long ago. They, that's getting on to 10 years ago, I think. Um, I'm not going to remember where. I think University of Michigan of Kabuki. Oh, but that was done with words. So it was, it was a traditional, traditional Kabuki that was narrated. Oh. which is not traditional, obviously, mm -hmm. but it was because it was a language class. How do you turn something traditionally Japanese into something that's verbal? Oh. So what they did was they had a, they staged a very traditional kabuki dance and then had the students as a chorus mm -hmm. off to the side narrating what was happening in Japanese. Well, they may be interested in doing a lot of makeup. The makeup, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, make the costumes, yeah. It was, kind of, it was yeah. a really cool performance. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love so you gave me some ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was well, so that look around Betsy? Are we? Where are we? We're, we're ready to eat whenever. Are, are, are mm -hmm. everyone feeling a little peckish yet? Yes. Money. Let's give our thanks to our. <laughs>